Today we're interviewing Bill Holby, who served in World War II and has a wonderful, interesting story to tell about his military service. It's a story of courage and, uh, and faith and uh, perseverance. And uh, I just want to make a few notes here, uh, say that uh, he was on a ship that was uh, torpedoed in 1943 and a total of six ships were sunk on February 2nd, 1943, around the world. Now let's begin with, uh, uh, Bill, where and when were you born? I was born, believe it or not, in Atlanta, Georgia. But it just happens my mother and father were down there at the time, and but I didn't, I would never would have known it. But I, I lived, I grew up in New Rochelle, New York. When, when were you born? I was born uh, in October 1921. I went to Westminster Choir College, which is a music school for church, church music. It's in Princeton, New Jersey. Do you remember uh, where you were and what you were doing uh, when you learned that Pearl Harbor had been attacked? I was in college at the time, and I'll never forget that day. So I went to the Merchant Marine Academy in 19... I started in 1942 and went and graduated... Where, 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 was where was that at? It's in Kings Point, New York. It's on Long Island. And uh, I, I was there at the founding of it. I was present when it was dedicated uh, in 1943. Uh, by Eleanor Roosevelt and the, the procedure was that you would go for three months of preliminary training and then they sent you to sea for six months on a ship and so that's when I was assigned to the Jeremiah Van Rensselaer which uh, on its was sunk. Yeah. Why did, why did you pick the Merchant Marine Academy? Why didn't you just join the regular Navy? Well because that was the only place I could get, really, uh, under the circumstances, and... Because uh, you, cause you didn't have a full college degree at that time. No, well, not at that time, no. You, what you got upon graduation was a third mate's license. If you were a deck cadet, if you were an engineering cadet, you got a third assistant engineer's license and uh, then you could sign on to a merchant ship uh, to work and that's what I did. On graduation from the Merchant Marine Academy I went on active duty in the Navy and I was given a commission as an ensign. And so what was your job duty in the merchant, as a Merchant Marine? Well, uh, as a cadet it was just to learn the ropes and so forth. But as soon as I graduated, I became uh, uh, an officer on a ship that carried ammunition. It was called the Lakewood Victory. There were ten such ships, and they, uh, they were commissioned just for as ammunition ships. And we were the last of the ten. And so we uh, carried ammunition throughout the Pacific Ocean. Well, getting, getting back to your first uh, assignment when you were a, 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 a midshipman with the Merchant Marines, what was your first uh, cruise? Well, the first cruise was on the Jeremiah Van Rensselaer. J Jeremiah Van Rensselaer was, uh, uh, he was a, 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 a Liberty ship. He was a Liberty ship? Okay, he was a congressman from New York, and he was in the first Congress of the United States. He was a strong supporter of the American Revolutionary War and became Lieutenant Governor of New York. And so that's who the ship was named for. Describe the ship. You say it was a uh, Liberty ship, but, yes. you were, but you were carrying cargo, weren't you, on that first cruise? General War cargo. We had a lot of tanks on board and uh, ammu sh small arms ammunition. And uh, I know there were a lot of landing mats. Those uh, mats you'd put in the desert so an airplane could land on the desert sand. Where was your ship in the convoy? It was uh, on, the, on one corner, on the edge. The convoy, I, th 
I was told it was consisted of 62 ships and they were in three rows uh, or, or they were in they sailed in columns three ships to the column and so there were about 20 ships across the horizon and you really couldn't see to the other side of the convoy because it was over the horizon and uh, we were on the, uh, shall we say, the port side or the left side of the convoy and I, our ship was back in the corner of it. So we were easy pickings. The uh, cruise began at the Bush Terminal in New York in Brooklyn and that's where the ship was tied up getting its load of cargo. And where, where were you going? And we were going to take it to uh, presumably Africa because the uh, U.S. forces were still in Africa and the war was uh, really just getting going then. And uh, so I think we would have probably put them off some place like in Morocco. Uh, what happened? There was a, wasn't there a truck on your ship, on the deck? What happened? Do you remember a truck on your ship and something happened? Well, to yeah. The, the, truck, the truck broke. It its its pinnings broke and as the ship rolled the truck rolled over the side and just splashed into the water. Uh, how many days were you at sea before the ship was attacked and then, then tell us about the attack please. About 10 days at sea and so we were about halfway across the Atlantic. We were south of Greenland and in our convoy was the very famous troop ship the Dorchester which itself was sunk uh, around, uh, oh, I don't know, around the 2nd or 3rd of February. It was one of those ships you're talking about. Six ships sunk at that time. And most of its uh, complement of soldiers were, were lost because the water was much too cold and they didn't have enough lifeboats and the ship sank so quickly so it was one of the greatest disasters of the war. Now that's for the Dorchester. That that ship had four chaplains on board. That's right. That's that, the that four chaplains. They gave up. They were they were they were last seen on the on the top deck. They gave their life vests to the sailors, and they were they were holding hands, praying, and they they went down the ship. That's right. So, but getting back to your ship, uh, uh, you were asleep, right? When when uh, well, I wasn't asleep. I was sitting on my bunk when the torpedo hit. And my roommate, uh, who was an engine cadet, he dashed out. He didn't even bother to get dressed. What did you, what, what, you tell us about this torpedo. Uh, you heard a loud explosion? Or how, so how, 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 I heard, how, yeah, we heard the loud explosion uh, of the first torpedo. They both, were, both hit way up in the bow of the ship. But they didn't damage the ship enough to sink it. But nobody knew that. So everybody ran to get off the ship. It was a very undisciplined uh, move for everyone. But I stayed back to get dressed. I got all the warm stuff I could. And then I went out on deck. It was a pitch black night just after midnight. No moon. And the armed guard crew was running around. There was nothing to shoot at. So... I decided, well, let's get off the ship. So they, everyone who had abandoned ship already got off on the starboard side. That was the protected side out, out of the weather. So we got off on the windward side where it was a little rougher. Why'd you, why'd you do that? Because that's the only place there were lifeboats left. There were oh. only two lifeboats on each side of the ship. So we lowered it away, which I knew how to do, and we slid down the man ropes and got in the boat. The ship was rolling something fierce. Didn't you tell me that, that some of the guys got in the in the lifeboat, they waited for the ship to move to that side and then they, they didn't have to jump as far or something like well, that? Well, that's right. The lifeboat would be 40 feet down and then the ship would roll and it'd only be a few feet above, a few feet away. So uh, when the ship rolled, you could drop off the man rope and be right in the lifeboat, which is what we did. 
Now you checked, didn't you check the lifeboats ahead of time uh, That's to right. make sure they had all the supplies and stuff? Yes, I, I uh, went through the lifeboats and to make sure all the equipment in them was lashed down. So when we were drifting, uh, we managed to get away from the ship and the ship was still floating there. The torpedoes didn't sink it, but we didn't know that. So. Uh, Anyway, we got off and we, uh, then I, th in the distance, I saw the silhouette of a ship on the horizon and I thought, well, he's probably looking for us. So I got out the flare pistol and I fired one flare and it arched through the air and it, it was bright, but the sea, it fell right into the sea because the sea just was so, the, the waves are about 20 feet high and about hundred feet across from one wave to the next and we were going from trough to crest of the waves but uh, this it was enough for this little ship called the Accrington a British ship uh, to pick us up and they picked us up and we climbed on board and now, that's how uh, we got rescued according to the internet most of the men died because of the exposure to the cold weather. That's do, right. do you think getting dressed enabled you to uh, function better and maybe saved your life, the fact that you got dressed? Oh, it definitely saved it. I got plenty wet, but I, because the spray was flying over the ship, over the lifeboat, and everybody got soaking wet. But at least, uh, and most of them, most of the sailors, I had the armed guard crew in the lifeboat with me, most of them suffered frostbite but I didn't because I started pumping the lifeboat out and I, by just the physical motions of working this pump, You're it, pumping, which pump. didn't do very much good, but it did kept, sort of keep even with the amount of water that got blown into the lifeboat by spray and so forth. Uh, your, your, your roommate that, that ran out as soon as he heard the oh, first he ran. Out. My roommate ran out and didn't even get dressed and did he survive? No, he didn't. He he died from exposure, I'm sure, along with everybody else who went then. It was a very undisciplined, abandoned ship. Do you feel like I hate God? To say, but that's just what it was. Do you feel like God or an angel protected you? Uh... Well, I'm sure that. God had other plans for me and he spared my life. He saw to it that my life was spared. How many people survived? How many survivors were on your ship? Do you know? Oh, uh, there were about uh, 26 survivors. There were about 62 on the ship. Who sank their ship? Or who attacked their ship? Well, I'm sure it was just a German submarine and they have record of that. Okay. Uh, you have record of that. And the and, and this just for the record, let us t report to that submarine a few months later was, was sank uh, was sank by the British, and so all the people the submarine was sank uh, uh, near the near the Azores. When you heard that we had dropped an atomic bomb on Japan and the war was over, what did you think? How did you feel about that? Oh well, I was already sailing on this ammunition ship, and we were anchored in the Philippines in Lady Gulf. And everybody was uh, kind of overwhelmed, awed and that such a thing would happen. But we also thought this is going to bring an end to the war faster, which it did. And so that was a good thing. Oh, thank you. That's very good. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Well, you're very welcome.